Hello and welcome back to Vault Hunters. In the last episode, we finally reached Vault level 25. So one of the things I want to do in today's episode is to run one or two more vaults and just see what the difference in the loot is going to be, because I do believe that we now have access to vault gear, which I really want to find some of, so that is on the agenda for today. But something else that I really want to work on as well is the base. This has been working really, really well for us so far, but I think it is time for a little bit of an expansion. Most of my storage is cluttered. I am starting to put things where they don't really belong. So I want to expand a little bit. And I do believe that we have a really good opportunity to spread out our base a little bit. So th that is the village area that is behind the storage. So we could probably take in this whole place and make a proper storage area and really make some room for us to breathe in. Also, this really shouldn't be this close to the entrance. So yeah, that's the second thing for the agenda for today. Now, before we go ahead and do that in my inventory, I have eight star shards and I have two vault gold, which I've got to go ahead right over here to the trades and I'm going to buy from Tubbo a star core. And now it's sold out. But with that, we are now able to make our third knowledge star, which I'm going to go ahead and use. Now in the research tree here or research screen, we have a few options. I really want refined storage because I want a proper storage solution or applied logistics, really one of these two, but there's still two points. So I could either save my knowledge point or I could go ahead and lower the price even more. The thing about the storage solutions as well, I believe is that they need power. I do believe that applied logistics does have a way of generating power. I'm not 100% sure though. In the power spot, we do have the power mod or of course down in processing, we have mods such as uh, mechanism and thermal expansion. But as you can see, they are quite expensive. And the power mod as well right now is four. So no matter what I choose, I really would benefit from picking something in decoration that will decrease the cost in all of these things here. So question is which one? Chef is going to have to be it. Cooking for blockheads. I'm not 100% sure what this will allow me to do, but I'm sure I'll figure it out. Regardless, refined storage should now be one, as you can see, same with applied logistics and things in here have also become cheaper by one. So I would say that is a major success. Now the next thing we have six unspent skill point and I should say thank you to everyone who came with suggestions down below in the comments to what specializations I should be picking. So here we go. For Rampage, I'm going to choose Shaman, which increases the total damage dealt by Rampage, but changes the damage to be dealt over a period of time instead of instantly during the duration of Rampage. This was suggested. I'm not sure I 100% understand this, but I like it better than Berserk, so I'm going to take this one. In Vein Miner, I'm going to pick Fortune, which will add levels of Fortune enchantment, while Vein Mining, which this is going to be really useful for when we mine Vault Doors, because I do believe that it adds it on top of our already Fortune levels. So if we have Fortune 3 on a pickaxe, we will now get with this when using Vein Miner, Fortune 4. So that is definitely going to be worth it. In Mega Jump, I'm going to choose Fart because this in imbues Mega Jump with a powerful knockback Nova in a radius around the jump. It does sacrifice some of the jump power, but I will want to probably upgrade Mega Jump down the road anyway. So boom. Dash, I'm picking Recharge because this will give me a little bit of healing effect by sacrificing some of the dash power. But again, I will probably be upgrading the dash anyway down the road. So I think getting extra healing in case I run out of healing potions is going to be worth it. Now for cleanse, I'm going to pick mend because in addition to clearing any negative effects affecting the player, cleanse will heal the player for an amount of hearts per negative effect removed. I find this quite useful. So boom. Now I should say as well that you can reset these using, I believe, choice flask used to remove selected spell specialization for Vein Miner, Dash, etc. So you can drink one of these and you can clear the specialization with this. Now I still have six unspent skill points as you can see. And for that, I'm going to pick Soul Hunter. It only costs one. And this allows us to start 
collecting soul shards, which I can use in the soul vendor. So that is going to be really useful. So I'm going to get that right off the bat. Next, I'm going to get experienced, which is going to give me plus 100% of the XP that I would normally get. It just costs one, just like that. And I found this one called Lucky Altar. Passively increases the player's chance of rolling a lucky recipe while crafting crystals. The base chance for a lucky recipe is 10% and the reduction in cost is 90%. So with this, it would become 20%. It does cost three, but I think it's really cool. So I think I'm going to take this. You could say it's a bad move, but I want to do it. Boom. And the next thing I want is reach. That is going to increase my reach distance by one. And yeah, I like it. And with that, the sun is setting. Now for a little bit of base expansion. Okay, so that is right by the villagers and that is the hole that I was talking about before. So that would mean that we can now expand into the space right here. I would of course need a roof and whatnot, but we will get to that. I even could actually add a basement down here. I didn't even realize that. That might be something that I choose to do. Now, all of these chests, unfortunately, I will want to move, which is going to be an absolute pain to do, but it will have to be done. I mean, already this is a pretty big improvement to what we had going on before. So now I can continue down this way until I hit my statue area, which is right here. So this corner. And now I can dig out this entire square. And of course, I should be using vein miner for this. All right. Now the farming area, I do want to move. So maybe move it into the wall over here. All of these chests move down. Maybe we make a storage system right here. A little bit of storage system anyway. Fill out this whole wall with chests. Now we do have the villages right here. I'm considering maybe moving some of them. And then right here, of course, we have access to the statue room. So maybe we can have a door to that over here or maybe in the middle of the room ish, maybe here instead, kind of leading in like this in the center. Yeah, I do like the sound of this. All right, progress is being done slowly. I have added the roof here. So now, yeah, the main thing that I need to do actually is going to be moving the chests over into their spots over here, which is going to be, it's going to be a nightmare, but it will be done. Don't you worry. All right, chest area pretty much ready. Now I just need to clean up my inventory just a little bit so I can start moving chests into that specific area. All right, a bunch of chests are in place and not all of them, but it should be enough for me to start being able to move some things over. Oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> All right, progress update. All the items have been moved into here. However, I have not sorted a single thing. I've just focused on moving stuff into here and we now have a whole lot more storage as these chests have not even been filled out. And over here we have all the ores and the materials and whatnot and also vault related gear over here. I thought it would be nice to have it separate. I moved the farm in here. However, I of course still need to, <laughs> I still need to do a lot of things. And of course in this mess, I am having a hard time finding the things that I need, but it is all of course temporary until things are fixed up. All right, progress update number, what is this, three or four? All right, I think this place is good enough for now. I have done a little bit of sorting so I can easier find what I need to find. I still need to do a bunch of the chest because yeah, a lot of it is still a mess, but I'll deal with that later. I also still, I think, need to sort out a little bit more lighting. I would like it to be a little bit more brighter in here. I did, however, add these doors and then this leading over to yeah, this is a bit dark. And then this leading over to the village area and the statue area, which we do have you. And Tobo is almost done. Captain Sparkles, you're done. And I Goody is done as well. Nice. As I've said before, we will be able to use those statues for other stuff in the future. In fact, I wonder if I can make this thing now. The statue cauldron. I'll need seven netherite ingots. But it's not like I am lacking at all. I actually have just enough of everything that I need here. Boom, seven netherite ingots. Yeah, it's definitely way too dark here. I'll sort that out. So cauldron and then boom, statue 
cauldron. So if I place that here, I should be able to take all these old statues. At least I, I you know what? I just want to double check that all of these are actually <laughs> dead and not just some that I've put aside. Nope, all of these are done with. So I can take all these and I can, well, actually, I think I need a bucket of water first. Plop, and then I can drop all the statues I don't need into this cauldron. And if I right click, as you can see, it is 40% full. So when it's 100%, we'll be able to get a mega statue, which lasts for a very long time. So that's cool. I also need to set this up to what it was before. Give me a minute. All right, we have four vault rocks in total remaining. It looks like we might have to go down mining soon to get some, but let us see what the next recipe is. Ooh. A lucky one, I believe that is, and that <laughs> is extremely easy to make. One honeycomb, 18 diorite, one redstone dust, and three ink sacks. That was really cool. I guess that could have been the lucky altar taking effect right there. Sweet. Next one. Huh. 54 beef, 13 gold gunpowder, two saddles, and terracotta. Okay, gunpowder is easy enough. The saddles would be an issue because I only have one. And I can only get that from either loot or killing a ravager or trading with a leather worker. Apparently a leather worker's workbench is a cauldron. Do in fact have more villagers, so we might as well expand. Cauldron, villager. Take your new job. You know you'll love it. Yep, exactly. See, everyone is nodding. Just take it. I can wait. Okay, I'm actually a little bit impatient. Get your new job. Oh, in the meantime, Tobo has died. <laughs> All right, I tried another villager and he took the job immediately. Now I just got to spend emeralds to buy leather pants. Uh, literally. Well, it's not literally emeralds down the drain, I guess, because he is being leveled up. Come on. Just sell me leather, please. Okay, guess I'm buying leather boots. At least they're cheap. <laughs> it does say he needs to be a level five, so I guess he needs to be upgraded quite a lot before. Oh dear. Okay, hey, hey, give me those. Well, this is as high as he is going to get for now, I think, because yeah, I need, I need, I need more emeralds and this. Uh... Anyway, we did get one Vault Crystal. What I think I'm going to go ahead and do is equip my Arena Crates, get my stuff ready, and go ahead and loot this Vault. Now, I'm not going to forget healing potions, nor am I going to forget building blocks. I have learned my lesson, at least I would like to think so. Healing potions like that. Okay, am I missing anything? I feel like I'm always missing something, but I think I got it. Oh yeah, one thing that we're able to start making are these vault catalysts. We do have the things to make them and we can combine a vault catalyst with a vault crystal to add modifiers. These modifiers I believe are random, so it could be good or it could be bad. But I think for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and run this vault normally and I'm gonna hope for the best. Okay, what do we have here? A resilient, Minus 30% durability damage, that's cool. Plus two minutes, oh, it's an extended, unlucky, trapped, yay, speedy, plentiful, nice. Okay, so we have 27 minutes in this one specific vault. That is really cool. Now I do need to be careful because apparently, yep. Okay, literally the first chest I open is trapped. I was about to say it can be trapped, but um, yeah, that's uh, hmm. that's that. That's uh, I'm gonna I'm just gonna ignore that and keep going. Oh yeah, and we're gonna start getting special people. It is unlucky, unfortunately, but hopefully we'll still get some pretty good things out of this. Health points, seven hearts. Yikes. Sure. Pricey, better be worth it, yeah. Oh, ooh, oh yes, definitely worth it. Ow, go away. Our very, very first, I, I wanna say proper vault loot, but you know what I mean. And now if I'm low on health, I can just yeet and get regenerated. 
Captain Puffy, you're fast, too fast. And I'm also being hunted by a baby zombie and the stress monster. This is... <laughs> this is not ideal. Ooh, okay, we got a village room. An omega chest, yes please, we like those. At least I think this is a village room. Indeed it is, I just don't know if I see any portal rooms though. But as this vault is plentiful, it might be worth sticking around anyway. Uh oh. Oh dear me. Hmm. 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 Okay, yeah, there's a, a spawner here somewhere. I do not know if sticking around is going to be worth it or not. Uh, yeah, you know what? I'm good. 19 minutes remaining. Not too bad. Uh, spider room. I do not like these at all. They do sometimes, apparently, however, have a lot of compressed blocks, which I will not say no to. I wouldn't mind finding enough vault diamonds in this vault to be able to make yet another knowledge star. <laughs> Time. Two minutes. Uh, sure. Ow. Ooh, another unidentified. Nice. This place is really unfriendly though. <laughs> 14 minutes. Another village room. It's very difficult to try and dig down when you're being hunted by baby zombies and tubbos. Monster soul. Yes, I will take this. Gladly. Ooh, another choice flask. Wu-Tex shards. Really, really valuable. Ow. Pretty sure, yep. Gilded chest right there. Okay. Let's dig down, see what we got. Oh! Hello. I don't think we have a portal room. No portal room, unfortunately. I'm just gonna keep moving. Another village room right after the other one. Wow. Okay, this one has to have a portal room, right? And I, it has to have. Uh, doesn't look like it. Unfortunately. Also, I need to be careful of my pickaxe's durability. Yikes. I will, however, dig down right about here. Yep. And then I'm going back out. That's unfortunate, though. Three village rooms in this vault, and none of them has been a portal room yet. What is this room? I don't think I've ever seen one of these, but it looks to be really promising. Because there are a lot of... Whoa. Good ores here. Oh, look at this. There's so many ores here in this area. Definitely worth checking out. Black opal up here. Oh, man. There behind the wall. All right. Five minutes remaining. I want to make sure I know where I am. And then probably head out soon. Oh. Isco. Hello. <laughs> Fancy meeting you here. All right. Less than... Three minutes remaining. I think I'm pretty happy with this. I think I'm just gonna bail. Nice! We got a lot of stuff from this. However, before I do anything else, I need to top up my pickaxe. Much better. And of course, we should sleep. All right, let's take a look at what we got. So, we got a repair core, so vault gear. We didn't get any of this vault, unfortunately, but vault gear are things like armor, and axe and swords. And these basically cannot get mending on them, so we use repair cores, I believe, to, as it says, fully repair any vault gear. And these vault scraps can be used to craft these repair cores, which is a little bit expensive. We got a vault apple, which is a crafting ingredient. We got a bunch of ores. I'm really happy we stumbled across that room. We can add those to the collection. Got a bunch of compressed blocks as well. Let's get these out of here. We got more burger items, which are really good because we're no longer able to use the vault cookies. So these burgers are going to be the next thing that we can use instead of the cookies. A vault bronze, catalyst fragments, relic booster packs, mystery boxes, etc. We got a statue generating myelite, my, myelite, myelite. Not sure what that is, but you can get a spot on that chest. Relic booster packs. Nothing. Mystery boxes. Uh, D. 
decent, I guess. Some vault assets, now Wu-Tex shards. These are relevant to, again, vault gear, which we unfortunately didn't get in this run. It reduces the level requirement of any vault gear. So vault gear, it will have a level requirement. We currently are 25 and a half. If a vault gear, say, is level 26, I wouldn't currently be able to use it. But I can then use Wu-Tex shards on that item and reduce the level requirement by one. So these are actually really, really handy and valuable. Got more Larima gems, Star Essence, Penyite gem, Black Opal, Benyotite, cool stuff. Now we have two bottles and these two left. So this is a choice flask used to remove selected specialization of ability cleanse. So say I want to remove mend and pick something else. I can then drink this choice flask and basically reset the specialization for cleanse. And this is a flask of regret. Remove one level of talent experienced and regain the skill points spent. So this flask is specifically for experience. So say I regret my purchase of the upgrade that I did earlier. I can drink this and I would get that skill point back and the experience talent would get back to what it was before I upgraded it. So these are very valuable as well. And now here we have these. Now currently they're undefined, but basically what they are, are basically like, I said basically many times, whoa. They're basically totems of undying. So let's roll them and see what we get. I'm gonna roll both of these at the same time. Now, when I say that these things are kind of like totems, I mean that they're kind of like totems because they do have some quite unique things that normal totems of undying does not have. But before we take a look at it, bedtime. Oh, be there we go, bedtime. So we rolled a blue one and a gray one. So this is a common rarity and this is a scrappy rarity. So let's take a look at them. Now, what we got here is a Valera totem. And the rarity, as you can see, is common on this one and scrappy on this one. They both have two levels and basically what happens is when I have this equipped in the vaults and I go ahead and kill a vault boss, this fella right here is going to level up and get another set of modifiers. Now the modifiers, or what I call modifiers anyway, is what this one has that says plus 400 durability, which I believe goes to this totem. And yes, I did say that correctly, these totems do have durability so they do get worn out over time and this one's modifier is hunger immunity which is kind of cool so i guess if we have a vault where we have hunger we can use this one to negate that i guess that kind of works maybe so that is what we got unfortunately we didn't get two different kinds of totems but this is pretty good this is basically going to replace my old totem of a dying this fella right here because this is going to be well way better and way cooler. So maybe in the next episode we will be able to defeat a vault boss and level this fella up and see what other modifier that we will be getting. So overall, not too bad. Now I am currently in the process of gathering just the final things that this vault also needs because I do want to make the final crystal, not to run it today, but there is one thing that I do wish to do. Also I need to remember that I have all of these emeralds in my chest here, so I can now use these emeralds plus these to go ahead and level you up to the point where I can finally get your saddles. And there we go, one emerald for one saddle, normally six, but that's fine. We will never be running out of saddles again. Now all I need is the terracotta. So for that, I will need 236 blocks of clay. Well, that's not really efficient. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's better. Much better. Okay, this is kind of funny. This clay patch is in the shape of a heart. Would you look at that? And I think that should do it for the clay that I need. Also, it's getting a bit scary out, so yeah, it's time to go home. And I, I really failed that jump and dash. <laughs> Which, in fact, I think I'm starting to regret taking the specialization for, because now... The recharge is so much slower, so if I get a choice or a flask of, I think, regret, then I might reset the specialization for this. The same with Mega Jump, because, yeah, they're just not as good anymore. <laughs> I don't really need the specialization. I'd rather have the main ability be good at what it's supposed to, so, yeah. Like, this is the Mega Jump now. I used to be able to fly all the way up there. Now, it, it, it's, bar it's barely a jump, so... Yeah, if I get the chance to, 
Probably gonna reset those. Now while this is cooking and turning into terracotta, I want to check out something that I forgot to look at before we went into the vault, and that is the shard pouch, because if you remember at the beginning of the episode, we chose this soul hunter, which allows us to collect soul shards. And I do believe that yes, we do have the vendor right here. So we could use these soul shards to buy things such as unidentified vault totems and unidentified vault leggings, which are really cool. Seal of the hunter, unknown item, cool stuff. And we get these by killing moths. But the way I've understood it is we need this, the shard pouch, which says required in inventory for soul shards to drop. Can store unlimited amount of soul shards. So I want to make this. So it shouldn't be too tough. I think we need like one string, two gold nuggets, yada, yada, yada. We do need purple wool, which is why I grabbed this red dye. So I should now be able to make this. Uh, no, uh, apparently I can't. Requires research, soul hunting. I Don't I have that? What research? <laughs> I'm not seeing anything related to Soul Hunter. Um, yeah, that's a mystery. Guys, if you know why I can't craft this, do let me know down below in the comments, please, because I feel like I should be able to make this, but apparently I'm not able to. Requires research soul hunting, but I don't see anything in the research tree that is soul hunting, so yeah. Any feedback on that is greatly appreciated. Now, while we're waiting for this terracotta to smelt again, we can go ahead and make what I want to do with the vault crystal, and that is these vault catalysts. So, we can craft these vault catalysts and combine them with a vault crystal to add modifiers. So, you know, the modifiers that are like healing or speedy or um, difficult, stuff like that, those that pop up when we just enter a vault. Well, we can add modifiers to the vault crystal and that vault will now then will then have those modifiers. Now these are a little bit expensive to make, but we do have plenty of Larimar and plenty of Benyotite. So I think we're all right if we make one of these. So first we need some perfect Benyotite and perfect Larimar. And if we place them, I think it's all the way around. There we go. And we now have a Vault Catalyst. And this one will add a random positive modifier and a random negative modifier. So there's another one that says a random cursed modifier, I believe. I don't know if there are other uh, types of modifiers as well. I kinda, I kinda want to make another. I'm gonna go ahead and make another just to see what we'll get because there's actually going to be a difference from catalyst to catalyst when we try and add it to the crystal. I'll show you uh, when we have the vault crystal ready. Right, there we go, and this one is... Okay, so this one will add plentiful and two random negative modifiers. This one doesn't sound that great unless we're really desperate or want ores. Then this might be a good one depending on what the negative modifiers are. I have 96 terracotta. Yeah, I, I need I need a bit more. And finally, the final terracotta and the crystal has been completed. Boom. All right, so now we can try and add these vault catalysts. So if we go into the anvil and put the vault crystal here, and let's start off with this catalyst, one random positive modifier and one random negative modifier. So if we put that in here, we get a vault crystal with healing and fragile. I'm not sure what fragile means, but we do have healing, which is really cool. So if we try and take this one in instead, we of course get plentiful and then we get difficult and raging. Ugh, raging does not sound fun whatsoever. Now here's the important part, I don't have another vault crystal to show you, but if I were to replace this vault crystal with another one, the modifiers that it gets in the end here would be different. I guess we can take a quick sneak peek. Uh... No, that one will have to wait. So I think I'm going to save these Vault Catalysts until I get some other crystals that I can try them on to see what kind of modifiers I get on them. Uh, it's very tempting. This is an issue with the Catalysts because you get to the point where you're like, ah, let, let me try again. Let me try another, let me try another, and another. <laughs> uh, it can be a problem, but I'm gonna do it. A third one, let's just see. Strong and one random negative modifier, okay. Strong and hard, so the difficulty is just a bit higher. However, we do have strength. Not one I think I'm going to apply, unfortunately. It is a bit of a gamble on what stuff you actually get on these things, but yeah. We'll have to try this in the next episode with another Vault Crystal. I'm going to add that back in here and this back in here. And then I'm going to sleep.
But guys, that is going to be it for this episode. We did a lot of progress. We got some Vault Catalyst here. We got our first Vault Totems, which is really cool. Yeah, we ran our first Vault as level 25, and I intend in the next episode to run some more Vaults to see what Vault gear that we can actually get. Now, of course, we also spent some time expanding the base, and I must say it is definitely a huge improvement. I still got some stuff to do here, but overall, this is really good. So guys, I really hope you have enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a like. And if you do, do consider hitting that subscribe button and enabling those notifications. Also, if you enjoyed the video, do consider sharing this video with your friends and community. That would mean a lot and it would help me out a ton. Also, if you're interested, you can support what I do over on Patreon. There's a link down below in the description. Or you can go to patreon.com slash binary vigilante. But that's it. Hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you in the next episode. Have a wonderful day and goodbye.